All Doinyo Lengai. For the Maasai tribes, an active volcano in Africa's Great Rift Valley is the Mountain of God. On the vast and dusty crater plateau in northern Tanzania, in a region dotted with hot springs and sulfurous geysers, rises a grey mountain called Old Doinyo Lengai. In the language of the Maasai tribe, it means Mountain of God. The aridity of the surrounding landscape is mitigated by a few umbelliform thorns and stunted baobabs. Rotocoles of Mamrosinus are carried by the wind on the cracked soil, and the little hell that grows here is quickly dried and yellowed by the dry climate. Old Doinyolengai, an active volcano of only 2,856 meters high, is not only a picturesque site, after all, majestic mountains like Kilimanjaro are not far away. But instead of spitting fire and smoke like all other volcanoes, this one throws washing soda into the air. Its extraordinary eruptions are made of ash and carbonate, a substance that in contact with moist air turns into sodium carbonate, i.e. washing soda. Old Doinyolengai is the only active carbonatitic volcano in the world and what sometimes looks like snow on its summit is actually the white ash it throws into the air. But the molten rock from its bowels is black in color and, although it boils menacingly in the depths of the crater, it reaches the surface only half as half as much as ordinary lava, glistening palely as it flows from the half. Once it comes into contact with the air, the lava changes color and turns into soda, like what is used for washing, but strong enough to burn the skin and vegetation. Old Donyo Lengai erupted in August 1966, and a year later a new explosion was recorded. Currently, disturbing noises can still be heard from its bowels. An ascent to the top takes six hours, and once they reach the crater, 300 meters wide, visitors can rush down into the pit where the lava bubbles like a cauldron of molten clay. In 1990, the American professor Kurt Stager wrote, after a few seconds, the earth shakes, a stream of lava bursts through the pit and spreads on its walls. When I got closer, I realized that this crater is actually at the mouth in the solidified crust. A lake of lava was boiling under my feet. The teacher goes on to tell how one of his companions hit the thin crust with his foot, it broke in a cloud of smoke. The laces from his shoes disappeared. His trousers were charred. When we return, I smile to myself, the mountain of God is a judge. The sacred mountain. To the west of Old Doinyo Lengai lies the vast Serengeti plain. The whole area is covered by a layer of alkaline ash thrown by Kerimasi, an old volcano, now extinct. The alkaline soil and the long dry season, from June to October, are not conducive to the growth of trees, but the grasses bloom here when the rains come, in November, attracting a lot of herbivorous animals, gazelles, zebras and antelopes, as well as their predators, lions and dogs particularly wild. Off the northern slope of Old Doinyo Lengai is Lake Natran, whose low waters, rich in soda, cover a layer of black mud. Few fish live here, and plants are completely absent, but blue-green algae abound in this alkaline soup, along with numerous equally small creatures that feed on the foul-smelling shore. There is also an extraordinary bird that thrives in this environment, the flamingo. Huge flocks shimmering in shades of pink, sometimes numbering over a million specimens, which often cover the surface of the lake, in search of algae or microorganisms to feed on. The nomadic Maasai peoples of Kenya and Tanzania believe that their god, Ngai, thunders from the summit of the sleeping crater. One of the central figures of their religion is Nitru Kop, a kind of local Eve, she was the first mother and lived in paradise with many children, but without a partner. She often looked charmingly at the moon and one day Ngai asked her to choose between the survival of the moon and the life of one of her children. And because she could have other children, Nitru Kop chose to keep Luna. Thus the first mother created mortality among men. The Maasai tribes traditionally measure their wealth and social status by the size of their herds. The Maasai eat meat, but rarely with that of their own animals, except on ritual occasions. The massive wildebeests are bred for milk and blood, extracted with the help of a thin cane stalk from the jugular vein of a live animal and drunk warm, as such, or mixed with milk and stored in flasks. The Maasai believe that this diet gives them strength, their warriors once dominated all the grasslands of the Great Rift. Some tribes still lead a nomadic life, leading their herds to the best grazing places, depending on the season. 
but the advances of modern medicine led to the considerable increase of the population, so that many Maasai have moved to the cities. In times of drought, they used to cross the grey, arid terrain to the foot of the old Doinyo Lenge Massif, where they prayed for rain. ENG Care ENG Care It is their eternal invocation, to Ngai, that the water restores the greenness and wealth of the pastures. I'm waiting for you next time with a new superb video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.